Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using moment distribution method. In this beam, the support C settles by 0.002 meter. The flexural rigidity EI is given as 8000 kN meter square. Before starting the analysis, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are three spans, span AB, span BC and span CD. In the span AB, we have two point loads, 9 kN and 18 kN. 9 kN is acting at a distance of 2 meter from the point A. 18 kN is acting at a distance of 4 meter from the point A. In the span BC, we have uniformly varying load. It is maximum in the center, 24 kN per meter. In the span CD, we have uniformly distributed load, 18 kN per meter. It is acting for the full span. Length of AB is 6 meter. Length of BC is 4 meter. Length of CD is also 4 meter. In this beam, all of the spans are having different moment of inertia. For the span AB, the moment of inertia is 1.5i. For the span BC, it is 3i. And for the span CD, it is 2i. Now, let us find the fixed end moments. First, let us find them in the span AB. In the span AB, we have two eccentric point loads. 9 kN and 18 kN. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WAB square upon L square and positive WA square B upon L square. Let us apply the values in the formulas. For this point load, A is 2, B is 4. And for this point load, A is 4 and B is 2. After the calculation, for M of A, B, we are getting minus 16. And for M of B, A, we are getting 20. Now, let us find the fixed end moments in the span B, C. In the span B, C, we have symmetrical uniformly varying load. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus 5 WL square upon 96 and positive 5 WL square upon 96. Here W is 24 and L is 4. Let us apply them. The support to C sinks by 0 0.002 meter. So we have to find the fixed end moments due to the sinking. The formula to find the fixed end moments due to sinking is 6 EA delta upon L square. If the sinking occurs on the left side of the span, the fixed end moments due to sinking will be positive. If it occurs on the right side of the span, the fixed end moments due to sinking will be negative. Since the sinking occurs on the right side, the fixed end moments due to sinking will be negative. In this formula, let us apply the values. EI is given in the question as 8000 kN meter square. Let us apply that. For the span BC, the moment of inertia is 3I. So we have to multiply the EI value with 3. Delta is 0.002, L is 4. When we calculate this, we will get minus 18. In the points B and C, the fixed end moments due to sinking will be same. So for M of C, B, we can apply this value directly. No need to find one more time. After the calculation, for M of BC, we are getting minus 38 and for M of CB, we are getting 2. Now, let us find the fixed end moments in the span CD. 
in the span CD, we have uniformly distributed load 18 kN per meter. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Here W is 18, L is 4. Let us apply them. We know that the support C sinks by 0.002 meter. So we have to add the fixed end moments due to sinking. We know the formula for the fixed end moments 6EA delta upon L square. In this span, the sinking occurs on the left side. So the fixed end moments due to sinking will be positive. The moment of inertia for the span CD is 2I. So we have to multiply EI with the 2. Delta is 0 0.002 and L is 4. After the calculation, for MFCD we are getting minus 12 and for MFDC we are getting 36. In the moment distribution method, we have to find the distribution factor. For that, we have to find the stiffness. Let us see the formulas to find the stiffness in the joints. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4EA upon L. If the fair end is hinged or with the roller support, the formula is 3EA upon L. If the fair end is continuous, the formula is 4EA upon L. In the joint B, first let us find the stiffness for BA. For that, from the joint B, we have to look at the point A. In the point A, there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4EA upon L. For BA, the moment of inertia is 1.5I. So instead of I, we have to apply 1.5I. Length of BA is 6. Let us apply that. After calculation, for the stiffness of BA, we are getting EI. Now let us find the stiffness for BC. For that, from the joint B, we have to look at the point C. The point C is continuous. If the fair end is continuous, the formula for the stiffness is 4EI upon L. The moment of inertia for BC is 3I. So instead of I, we have to apply 3I. Length of BC is 4. Let us apply that. After calculation, for the stiffness of BC, we are getting 3EI. Now in the joint C, let us find the stiffness for CB. For that, from the joint C, we have to look at the point B. The point B is continuous. We know that if the fair end is continuous, the formula for the stiffness is 4EA upon L. Moment of inertia for CB is 3I and length is 4. Let us apply that. After calculation, for the stiffness of CB, we are getting 3EI. Now let us find the stiffness for CD. For that, from the point C, we have to look at the point D. In the point D, there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula for the stiffness is 4EA upon L. The moment of inertia for CD is 2I and length is 4. Finally, for the stiffness of CD, we are getting 2EI. Now let us find sigma k. In the joint B, we have calculated two stiffness values. We have to add both of them. After adding, we are getting 4EI. In the joint C, we have calculated two stiffness values. We have to add both of them. After adding, we are getting 5EI. Now let us find the distribution factor. The formula is k upon sigma k. We have calculated the k values and sigma k values. Using the formula, we can find the distribution factors. Now, let us start making the moment distribution table. In the table, first let us enter the members. Then, let us enter the distribution factors. Then, let us enter the fixed end moments. 
Now let us make the first distribution in the joint B. For that we have to add these two fixed end movements and then multiply with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting negative values. So we have to enter them in the table as positive. Now let us make the first distribution in the joint C. For that we have to add these two fixed end movements and then multiply with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting negative values. So we are entering inside the table as positive. Now let us do the carry over. For that we have to divide these values by 2 and enter the answers. Now let us do the second distribution in the joint B. For that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting positive values. So we have to enter them as negative. Now let us do the distribution in the joint C. For that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting positive values. So we have to enter them as negative. Now let us do the carry over. For that we have to divide these values by 2 and enter the answers. Now let us start the third distribution. In the joint B we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting negative values. So we have to enter them as positive. In the joint C we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting negative values. So we have to enter them as positive. Now let us do the carry over. For that we have to divide these values by 2 and enter the answers. In the similar way we can do more distributions and carry overs until we are getting very smaller values. I have done up to the 6th distribution. I have stopped in the 6th distribution because I am getting very smaller values. In the last distribution we should not make a carry over to all the members. We have to only make the carry over to the fixed ends. Now let us add all of the values and find the final movements. After adding we are getting the final movements. Now we are going to find the vertical reactions. First let us take the span AB and find the vertical reactions. In the span AB we have the movements MAB and MBA. MAB is acting in the anticlockwise direction and MBA is acting in the clockwise direction. In this span first let us find the reaction RA. For that let us take movement about B. In this case we are moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. RA is acting in the clockwise direction. So that will be positive and the distance is 6. So 6 RA. The point load 9 kN is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is 4. The point load 18 kN is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So that will be negative and the distance is 2. This movement is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So that will be negative. And this movement is acting in the clockwise direction. So that will be positive. Finally for RA we are getting 10.28 kN. Now let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0. Ra and Rb1 are acting upwards. So both of them are positive. These two loads are acting downwards. So both of them are negative. For Ra we can apply 10.28. Finally for Rb1 we are getting 16.72 kN. Now let us take the span BC and find the vertical reactions. In the span BC, we have two movements. MBC, which is acting in the anticlockwise direction, and MCB, which is acting in the clockwise direction. In this span, first let us find RB2. For that, let us take a movement about to C. RB2 is acting in the clockwise direction. 
so that will be positive and the distance is 4 so for rb2 the uniformly varying load is acting in the anti clockwise direction so it will be negative for this kind of load we have to multiply the area with the centroidal distance it is a triangle we know the formula for the area of a triangle half into breadth into height here the breadth is 4 and the height is 24 now let us find the centroidal distance this is a symmetrical triangle so the centroid lies in the center to find the centroid we have to divide the length 4 by 2 this movement is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that will be negative and this movement is acting in the clockwise direction so that will be positive finally for rb2 we are getting 27.42 now let us apply this rule and find rc1 rb2 and rc1 are acting upwards so both of them are positive the uvl is acting downwards so that will be negative to convert the uvl load into point load we have to find its area we already know its area let us apply that finally for rc1 we are getting 20.58 kN. now let us take the span cd and find the reactions in the span CD, we have the movement MCD, which is acting in the anti-clockwise direction, and MDC, which is acting in the clockwise direction. By taking movement about D, we can find RC2, and by applying this rule, we can find RD. In the point B, we have calculated the reactions two times, RB1 and RB2. Let us add both of them so that we will get rb in the similar way let us add rc1 and rc2 so that we will get rc now using the reactions and loads we can draw the shear force diagram here i have made the calculations for the shear force diagram here you can see the shear force diagram now let us draw the free movement diagram to draw the free movement diagram we have to consider every span as a separate simply supported beam first let us take the span a b and see how to draw this diagram here i have converted the span a b into a simply supported beam let us take movement about b and find RA by applying this rule we can find RB RA is 12 and RB is 15 when we multiply 12 into 2 we will get 24 and when we multiply 15 into 2 we will get 30 now let us take the span BC here we have uniformly varying load here we have to apply the formula WL square upon 12. Using the formula we are getting the ordinate 32. Using that we can draw this diagram. In the span CD we have uniformly distributed load. Here we have to use the formula WL square upon 8. Using the direction of the end movements we can draw the end movement diagram. By combining free movement diagram and end movement diagram, we can draw the bending movement diagram. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.